Would you like to find out how to tap into your inner self in order to help you in your weight loss journey? Our guest today will tell us how. Hi, my friends. Welcome to another video. I'm Eleni, and today we are joined by Cassandra Michael, positive psychology and mindset coach, MSC, and founder of Redefining Happiness. Stay with us until the end when we will share a special bonus. Now, if you want to lose weight, want information, motivation, and inspiration, start now by subscribing to my channel and click the bell icon so that you can be notified each time I post a new video. Cassandra, thank you for joining us from beautiful Bali. Can you give us a quick background of yourself and how you came to create Redefining Happiness? Hi, Eleni. Thanks for having me here. Um, and hi, everyone from beautiful Bali. Um, so how I created Redefining Happiness. Um, so just as a, a background, as you mentioned, I'm a positive psychology and mindset coach. I've been doing this for about um, three to four years. Before that, I used to work in the corporate world as um, a marketing manager, but that was not fulfilling me. I felt like it was not my purpose here. Um, and uh, at the time I was working in Amsterdam and uh, due to personal circumstances, I felt like it was the time to just go forward and transition into coaching. Um, and I, I did that, um, and I haven't looked back since, so I'm really happy for doing that change. And, um, yeah, I, I work with most of my clients online. Uh, I'm quite a nomad, let's say living in different countries and also hosting workshops around the world. Um, yeah, my foundation is positive psychology, uh, but I do tend to use a holistic approach, um, incorporating also energy, psychology, mindfulness, cognitive behavioral therapy, and some other modalities. Um, and while working with my clients, I like to integrate, let's say, mind, body, and spirit. That's awesome. So um, what are the three steps required to be able to tap into your inner self? Um, so when you say tap into your inner self, do you mean to connect with who you truly are? Exactly. Um, well, I think the first step is mindfulness, awareness, and presence in a sense. So we're always on autopilot and we're just often going through the motions of, um, you know, home and work and we just have these routines and maybe we're stressed and we're very much in our minds. So it's very important, I think, to start cultivating an awareness, um, firstly, of our thoughts. So what does our internal um, dialogue look like? Um, that voice inside our head, is it kind or is it nurturing? So what is the quality of our thoughts and where are we putting our energy? And also tuning into our bodies. So um, our thoughts create our emotions and then our emotions um, will impact our bodies. So I think the first step is um, to start cultivating this mindful approach and um, yeah, tuning into your thoughts and tuning into your body and seeing where are you holding tension and where might there be some blockages? How are you talking to yourself? Are you present? So um, yeah, all those, those questions to come to the now, I think that's step one. And um, I think that's the, the most important step. Uh, and then I think it's a lot about um, leaving the mind and connecting with the heart. So um, when we're stressed, when we're anxious, when we maybe engage in behaviors that are not good for us. Um, so those are connected to the ego and to fear and to limiting beliefs that we might have um, or conditioning that, that we might have adopted throughout the years. So um, I personally often suggest to my clients some heart-centered approaches so they can exit the mind and reconnect with the heart. Um, and an example of that is, let's say, keeping a gratitude journal, whereby um, every night you write down three good things. So three things that you're grateful for, three things that you enjoyed during that specific day and why. And that really helps to start 
let's say, rewiring your brain in a sense to focus on the positives. And um, it's a it's a very powerful way to connect with the heart. That's great. Hey, friends, if you're excited to begin a journey of discovering your true self and finally losing weight, please say yes in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and share with someone you know would benefit. Hey, Cassandra, why do you think a person might have allowed themselves to gain weight other than perhaps a diet of junk food? Um, well, I think it, it boils down to self-love and self-worth. Uh, so often, um, I think people turn to eating as a way um, to cover the pain that they might be feeling inside. So otherwise called emotional eating. Um, and I think once um, someone has started to cultivate this awareness that I spoke about before, um, maybe they can slowly start becoming aware of their behaviors and when they're engaging in them. So um, I'll ask your viewers, when, when do you uh, engage in emotional eating or eating maybe more than you should or eating junk food um, that tastes good initially, but then you regret it? Um, has something happened? Did something trigger you? Do you feel something inside, maybe um, some discomfort, some pain or a void that you want to try and fill? Um, so, yeah, I think it's an attempt to maybe numb the pain. And again, the first step would be to start to, to be still and um, become aware of this. And then it's starting, I think, to befriend the pain and sit with it instead of trying to suppress it um, or make it go away by, let's say, in this case, eating. But other people might engage in other behaviors like drinking or taking drugs or working too much or you know we have a lot of coping strategies that numb us and um, that's all in an attempt to avoid discomfort and avoid pain mm. um, so when uh, someone has become aware of this it's about sitting with this emotion and looking at it with curiosity and saying, hey, okay, what am I feeling? Let's say I'm feeling tension in my stomach or a tightness on my chest. Um, tuning into that feeling and allowing it, firstly, to be there and acknowledging it and saying, okay, I'm feeling tension. Labeling it will help. And then um, tuning in and saying, what, what does this want to teach me? What is this from? And then it's, it's the process of slowly identifying what our triggers are and maybe what wound we have. Um, obviously, it's uh, easier if somebody's working with a professional, um, but it's a practice that they can do by themselves as well. Um, and I think um, something important to keep in mind is that they should approach, approach these emotions with curiosity and most importantly with self-compassion. Um, and try and validate their experience. So a key reason we have these wounds is from our childhood because our emotions and our experiences at the time were never mirrored or validated. So now it's up to us to reparent ourselves and sit with this pain and with this emotion and validate our experience and show ourselves compassion. And that's needed in order to create the space necessary for growth and healing and transformation. Right. Is there anything specific that, um, that someone could do to, to get started? Because um, sometimes something like um, this might seem overwhelming to a person. Is there like one specific thing that someone could do like right now to, to begin the path um, towards, you know, healing themselves, towards finally realizing weight loss? Yeah. Um, I think the first step and something they can do right now is to start cultivating awareness. Um, what that looks like is starting to notice when they're very much in their heads and then becoming present. Um, so there's a mindfulness technique called the stop technique where you literally do exactly that. You notice that you're very much in your, in your mind um, and then you say, okay, stop come here and you come to the present moment by engaging your senses and you can ask questions like what do I see what do I smell what do I feel 
Um, and it also helps to actually like literally look around um, and you're activating the vagus nerve, um, which will also help calm you. Um, so there are various techniques that people can do to start cultivating mindfulness and awareness. That's one very easy technique. Um, then, for example, meditation really helps as well. So they could start with a simple 10 minute meditation practice every morning. Um, and I think, yeah, this awareness is the foundation for change because, well, only what we are aware of can we change. All right. And um, with meditation, do you, would you um, recommend some of these guided meditations that you can find on YouTube or um, online or, you know, something like that? Or do you recommend um, a more Zen approach where you just sit in total silence with no thoughts at all? Um, that depends on the person, but um, as if somebody's a beginner, I would definitely recommend a guided meditation. Um, a great app for that is Insight Timer, uh, mm -hmm. where they have a lot of free guided meditations. And then it's about just figuring out which style suits you best. So some people like body scan meditations or meditations focused on the breath. Others prefer more like uh, visual meditations where you have to visualize certain things. Um, so there's just about figuring out, you know, what works for you because it's, it's very personal. Right. Well, Cassandra, thank you for your insight and guidance. I'm excited to let my viewers know that you have agreed to offer a special bonus of 30% off your one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Now, yes, if you're interested right. in accepting this offer, please use code a slender bean. I will have details in the description below. I will also put a direct link to Cassandra's website. You can read more about Cassandra, view testimonials, book a free call to find out if you and Cassandra have the chemistry needed to move ahead with one-on-one -on -one coaching. Again, thank you, Cassandra, for your time. Thank you, Eleni, for having me. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank okay. You. My friends, until next time, be strong. And if you believe you can lose weight, then you are halfway there.